my name is Colin, and in this episode of Let's Learn Blender, I'll be showing you how you can have Blender automatically switch between multiple cameras for different camera angles as you play back or render out your 3D animation. Now, in this video, I'm going to be adding several cameras into this simple scene, which has two robots having, I suppose, well, a staring competition, because there's actually no animation in this scene. But what I'm going to be demonstrating here is that without even animation, you can tell a story visually just by controlling the viewpoint or the camera angle from which the viewer sees the important parts of your 3D scene. This is part of visual storytelling and cinematography. Let's go ahead and jump in. First of all, your 3D scene actually comes with a default camera when you start up Blender. So I'm going to go ahead and turn on my overlays right here. So now you can see the lights in my scene. And if I go ahead and back up in my scene, you'll see that I actually have the camera selected right now. To look through my camera, of course, I can press this camera button, or if I have an extended keyboard with a number pad, I can press the number zero on the numpad as well to jump into the camera's view. Now, if I go ahead and press this little tiny arrow or the N letter N key on my keyboard, I can go down to the view tab in this property sidebar and under the view section, I can turn on lock and I'll make this a little bit wider lock camera to view that is not on by default. And when I have that checked, it's easy now for me to I'll go ahead and collapse the sidebar. It's easy for me to control the camera by zooming in. I can pan around and I can orbit around my scene. And this is actually moving my camera around. So my first camera angle here is going to be I'm going to zoom out and orbit around and pan over is going to be a wide shot. So this is going to be camera number one. And to indicate to Blender that I want this camera to be the camera that you see through on frame one, let's say all the way up to frame 49 or so, I'm going to go to the first frame where I want this camera to be active with my little playhead right here and add what's called a marker into my timeline. Now, if I go to the marker menu at the top of my timeline in the header and I say add marker, that will add, well, a marker in my timeline this is not actually a camera marker. This is just a normal marker that I suppose animators just use to indicate in a visual way where important keyframes are along their timeline in their animation. They're just a visual representation of an important point or action in their story, I suppose. If you make a marker, you can bind your current camera that you have selected. So I'm gonna go ahead and select my camera. If I go ahead and select a lamp and then click on the very edge of the camera, does it select it? Well, I suppose that it is selected in my outliner and that's what's important. It is actually a selected object even though we don't see much of an orange outline of the camera, so I suppose it's fine. With the camera object selected and my playhead at the position of the marker, if I go to the marker menu and say bind camera to markers, what that'll do is it'll link my currently selected camera to the marker that's on my current frame. So marker, bind camera to markers. And you can see hopefully that my little marker turned into a little camera icon. It named that marker the same name as my camera, which is just camera. And now when Blender plays back in the timeline, it'll switch to view through this camera. It'll make it the active camera. In other words, when it gets to that marker in the timeline. Now, right now, there's only one camera in my scene. So I'm going to go ahead and break out of my camera by pressing the number pad zero on my keyboard. And I'm going to go ahead and add another camera into my scene. So I'll go up to add and camera and it'll add a new camera in my scene. I think I actually have the 3D cursor turned off in my scene. Yeah, under overlays, I have my 3D cursor turned off. So I'll turn that on. Whenever you add a new object into your 3D scene in Blender, of course, it adds that 3D object, including a camera, to wherever this little 3D cursor is. Now, this camera, of course, is the second camera in my scene, so it's not the active camera, which means that if I go ahead and press the camera button here, it's not going to look through the second camera that I added because you only look through the active camera in your scene. So what I can do is I'll break out of my first camera and I'll select my new camera and I'll go up to to view and I'll say cameras set active object as camera. That means the selected object in my scene, which is my new camera, will be the active camera. And when I do that, I suppose it jumped right into that camera. I can now, because I have 
lock camera to view set in that sidebar right there, lock camera to view. I can simply scroll down to move this second camera into position. So I'm going to go ahead and break out just to show you that this second camera now has that darkened triangle there, which it didn't before because now it's the active camera. So for the second shot of my animation, I'm going to go back into that camera with the number pad zero key on my keyboard, and I'm going to orbit around to an over the shoulder shot. So let's go ahead and zoom in here. In fact, this is a good opportunity for me to show you that yes, with a camera object selected, you don't have to keep the default zoom level or field of view. If I select to camera and then go down to the object data tab, you can see that under that camera's properties, there is a focal length property, which is the amount of zoom. So if I want to make this a zoom lens, I can type in there maybe 120 millimeters. And now it's a more zoomed in lens. If I go ahead and zoom out and maybe I will pan and orbit and I'm going to zoom in to something along the lines of, well, that or so, maybe a little bit zoomed out. By the way, if you're new to animation and movie making in general, and you're not familiar with basic camera angles and cinematography terms, I'm gonna go ahead and give you some resources later in this video for learning camera angles that are very common in movie making and cinematography. Again, a little bit later in this video. So this is an over the shoulder shot featuring one of my two characters. And to keep things simple here, I'm gonna have my scene automatically switch to this camera so that this camera will be the active camera at exactly frame 50. Okay, so at frame 50, I'll put my playhead right there. I'm going to select that second camera, which looks really long because it has a longer focal length, of course, that I set a moment ago. With that camera selected at frame 50, I'm going to skip the step of actually adding a new marker right where this is. Instead, I can just go right to the marker menu and without even a marker being there, if I go to bind camera to markers, it'll actually make a marker for that camera and bind it to it automatically. So that'll save you an extra step. Now, if I go back to frame one in my animation and I go ahead and press play, you're gonna see that my scene is viewing through the first camera, my wide camera angle, and then right at frame 50, I'll go ahead and press play, it'll switch automatically to that over the shoulder shot and it's as easy as that. But you can see that in my timeline, these markers are not very clear. They're just taking on the names of the two camera objects, which are camera and camera.001. We can do better than that though. We can name these cameras so that their markers actually give us a description of what camera angle is being switched to at that moment on the marker. So if I break out of my camera with the zero key on my numpad and I select that first camera, if I go over to my object tab in the properties editor, I can give this camera a name. Now be careful, there is a object data name right here under the green tab. That's not what we're going to name here. If I go under the orange square object tab and I name this camera, uh, camera one wide and I press enter. Now you will see that name appear down here. And if I select my second camera, which I will name under the same little object tab here, camera, and I'll name it two. And then I'll put the abbreviation OTS, which means over the shoulder. And I'll just add to the end of the name what we're looking at from over the shoulder. We're looking at the pink robot right there. And so you can see it's appropriate name right here. Let's go ahead and add a few more cameras and I'll give you a few more tips along the way. So I'm going to press shift A on my keyboard to add a new camera. Shift A brings up the add menu, of course. When you add a new camera, you don't actually need to make it the active camera to start controlling it. Instead of going up to with its selected the view menu and cameras and set active object as camera, I can skip that step. Instead, I can just go to where I want this camera to be switched to. And of course I can select a marker and I can drag it around to move it if I don't like where it's switching at any one given time. So I'll leave it at frame 50 though. So I've added this third camera. I'm gonna go to frame hundred and right here, I'm just gonna have it selected and go to marker 
bind camera to markers, that will make it the active camera at this frame. And so now I'll press zero on my numpad to go ahead and look through it. I can go ahead now and position it the way that I want. I'm gonna go ahead and make it an opposite over the shoulder shot. So I will select the camera, go to the object data tab and make it also 120 millimeter lens like that. And I will orbit and pan the camera around just like, oh, something along the lines of that. Actually, I'm going to pan up a little bit and orbit a little bit just to adjust it a little bit and make it a bit nicer. And under the object tab, I'll go ahead and give this camera a name. I'll call it camera three OTS and I'll call it yellow robot and I'll press enter. So now if I go back to the beginning of my timeline and I press play, you can see that my scene is viewing through the appropriate camera at the appropriate time and the switches are automatically happening between my different cameras. So what I can actually do now is break out of my cameras and I'm going to speed this next part of the video up. I'm going to go ahead and add a few more cameras into my scenes for a medium close-up shot of the opposing character from the last few. I'm going to switch back to a closer shot of the pink robot. I'm going to switch back over in camera number five to an even closer shot of my yellow robot and we'll finish off this video after that with a few tips on animating your cameras while you're switching between them, what not to do, and I'll give you some resources for learning more about camera angles and cinematography at the end of this video. So I'll speed this next part of the video up. All right, it looks like I have all five of my cameras set up and I have them named. If I go back to the first frame of my timeline and I press play, you can see my viewport looks a little bit busy with all these big cameras in the middle of the viewport, but you can see the cameras are switching appropriately. If you would like your cameras to not appear so big in your viewport, you can simply scale them. If you have a camera selected and you tap S on your keyboard, you can make the camera appear smaller. So I'll go ahead and select all the cameras with long focal lengths and I'll tap S to make it smaller there. As long as you don't go past zero and flip the camera around, you should be fine because the scale of the camera object does not affect how it looks. If I go back to a view through a camera and I scrub around my timeline, you can see everything still looks the same here. So if I go back to frame zero and I press play, I have my wide establishing shot. I have an over the shoulder shot. I have a reverse over the shoulder shot. I have a medium close up and then a reverse close up to intensify the action. We are zooming in and stepping to the next closest camera angle with each next shot. That brings me to my next point, which is you can add animations onto your camera if you like, while still having camera switching. What I'm going to go ahead and do is select my first camera, my wide camera, and make it into a dolly shot. That means I'm going to have the camera move while you're looking through it from left to right. So I'm actually going to break out of my camera here and I'm going to have it selected. If I go to say frame one on my timeline and I, with the camera selected, I tap I on my keyboard. I means insert keyframe if I have my uh, mouse in the 3D viewport here. So I, and then I choose location and rotation. I want to insert a keyframe that tells the camera what location and what rotation it should be at any given time. In fact, at frame one. So I, location, rotation. The camera now knows that it is going to be right here. In fact, on that frame, I'm going to move the camera over and make sure that it looks good while I am looking through it. So I'm going to, on that frame one, just orbit around a little bit. So we're still centering the characters in the middle of my camera's view. I'm going to tap I again with that first camera selected. So I'll select it, I, location, rotation. I'll go to the end of that camera's duration. So frame 49 or so, and I will orbit my camera over a little bit and pan it. So it'll look like my camera is basically on a set of, uh, well, camera train tracks, which is a dolly in movie making lingo. I'm going to go ahead and make sure my characters are centered there. Uh, I kind of like that. And on frame 49 with the camera selected, I'll click on the edge of it there. I'll tap I, 
location rotation. So I've made two keyframes and that means I have animation. If I go back to the beginning of my timeline and press play, my first shot is a dolly shot and we switch on frame 50 to the next shot. Don't worry about the fact that as you're going from one camera to the next, that you see a little bit of a transition. That's just in Blender's viewport. You'll see it kind of zoom past and show you an extra little frame in the middle. That won't be there when you render out your final project at all. Don't worry about that. Likewise, we can animate not just a camera's rotation and location. If I go to one of my later shots, I can animate camera properties too. So let's say on this medium close-up shot, roughly a medium close-up shot of this pink robot, I want to have the camera slowly zoom in, not move in towards the actor or character, but just zoom in. If I select my camera and then go over to the object data tab with the camera settings, I can animate the focal length as well here. So from frame 150 to 199, I'm going to have the camera zoom in. I'm going to go ahead and on frame 150, I'm going to set my focal length to 50, but actually make a keyframe of that value by pressing this little dot here. If I press this dot, it makes a keyframe of that focal length value at that time. Can we see that on our timeline? If I go over and open up this side panel and open up my summary here, do we see it? If I pan around, Oh, you know what? I actually added a keyframe onto the wrong camera. I have my first wide camera selected, camera one wide. So I'm going to go ahead and get rid of that keyframe on my first camera. I guess when I clicked on the little border, it didn't properly switch. It doesn't look like it's switching for me right now for some reason when I click on the border or the edge of my camera frame. So I'm going to go ahead and in my outliner, select my uh, camera four right there. And now on its focal length, I will press this little dot to add a keyframe. We can see it right there. And then on frame 199, I'm going to animate the focal length value by turning it up to zoom in over time. And then let's say with a focal length of 184 at frame 199, I can press the keyframe button again. That'll add a keyframe of that value at that time at frame 199. So now over that time, the camera is zooming in ever so slowly. So if I go back to the beginning of my animation and press play, I have a dolly shot and I have a shot at the end where we are zooming in on my little character there. There we go. So there we have it. We have added multiple cameras into our scene and automatically had Blender switch between them as we played back our animation. This will also apply. The cameras will also be the active cameras as you go to render and render out your animation. All the cameras will automatically switch and you will get the animation from the correct cameras at the right times. At the end of this video now, I actually want to leave you with a resource that if you are interested in learning more about camera angles, movie making, cinematography, there is a YouTuber, also an independent filmmaker by the name of D4 Darius, who has an awesome video called Using Powerful Camera Angles and Shots for Filmmaking. If you want to learn more about these camera angles so you can make your animations even more professional with standard and professional looking camera angles, go ahead and check that video out. I'll put a link to it in the description area below this video here on YouTube. But that'll be it for this video. Thanks again so much for watching. If you have not yet, please go ahead and click on that like button below this video. It really helps out me and my channel and it gets these videos more seen. If you would like to see more videos like this one in either Blender or in the Godot game engine, go ahead and click on that subscribe button below as well as the bell icon to be notified whenever I upload a new tutorial. Go ahead and check me out on Facebook and on Instagram. In those two places, I post sneak peeks and previews of what I'm working on next for this channel. That's where I communicate with you guys the most, except here on my YouTube channel, of course. That'll be it for this one. Thanks for watching. We'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.